All right, so we looked at some side side issues and, um, you know, and, and a really great way of fixing it. A question came up during the break of shoulder hip heel alignment. We've all heard of shoulder hip heel alignment, better be shoulder hip heel, um, and there's no two ways about it. Well, um, you've got to look at the alignment of the body as I'm standing. It's not shoulder hip, it might be shoulder hip ankle novel, but if you're thinking shoulder hip spur, then that leg has got to be, right? It might be shoulder hip ankle novel. You think about a weight lifter. A weight lifter is the one that really tests out these theories, right? Well, the hip in a weight lifter is above the ball of their foot. If that's your hip, right? Not here, hands on hips, but at any rate, either one is above the centre of gravity of the foot. Centre of gravity of the pelvis, above the centre of gravity of the foot. If not, you drop the weight, right? If you don't believe me, next time you go past a park, go and find a swing. You call them swings here? Yeah, yeah go, go and find a swing. Um, and stand on it. Hmm. With your shoulder hip heel and uh, see how you go, right? It, it just doesn't make logical sense. How come I fall off, right? Plus, I always want an inch of protection, right? An inch of protection is worth better than a pound of cure. If, I, if my foot's a little bit more forward, you know, here's, here's something. My grandpa used to ride dead straight legs, legs straight out in front of him, okay? Leave grandpa alone, he's in heaven. <laughs> of the 82 years in which he rode, there's um, never... And we've got all these stories from the farm because nothing ever happened with us out everyone knowing, you know, and the whole district to find out. And the same stories will be repeated every Christmas. And um, uh, Grandpa never came off. He got pulled out of the sulky. He got pulled the traces out of the, out of the cart. He, he, all these stories. But he never, ever fell off in 82 years of breaking and training horses. He never hit the floor. And doesn't that say something? Yeah. Now, my mother had her leg back a little bit further. She said, put your toe opposite the horse's elbow. My mother could gallop down a hill better than you lot. I'll tell you what, she's in heaven. Don't you not my mother. <laughs> You'll be in trouble. And she, her and I used to have, we had this mountain, Mount Nathan on the Gold Coast, and it is steep on our side, and we owned halfway up the mountain. And the, the, there was these fire trails that used to go up them for the firemen to be able to get to the top. And in those days, you used to be, we'd go up the little road, but it had been cut and like there's these ledges, embankments. Instead of coming down the road, we'd just go straight down that mountain, jumping on the road, going, jumping on the road, going, jumping on the road, going, just flat out. Man from Snowy River, right? Yeah. Now, I, only twice in my life I've had a horse stumble down to their nose. And because I didn't have loose floppy reins hanging down with my fingernails, you don't ride man from Snowy River like that, you have contact and you have those thumbs on those reins. And when the horse hit, the, hit, hit, his, hit down, I was able to pick him up, man from Snowy River style, going, come here, puppy, and kept going, right? Now, these are mountain ponies. This is not Saint who goes, I'm half Frisian. Friesland is flat. Don't put me down the hill. Don't be ridiculous. Right, these are mountain ponies and fly, baby. Um, and just walk around for a little bit for me. And uh, thanks, guys. And, um, uh, and so that bit of protection, the little bit toe out in front of you, don't start bringing their legs back. You will never, till the day I die, hear me ask you, bring your leg back. Never. Right, it won't come out of my mouth. It might if we're doing half pass and the horse hasn't got a little issue but we're not doing half pass at this level so you will never hear it come out of my mouth if the, if the person's got their legs right out in front of them the only disadvantage to that is that you, it's very very hard to get bounced like that but like I keep saying two of the best piafs and passages in America are two cowboys right two bush bunnies right one come from Australia, one from America, but they live in here in America. They're the best PF and passage around. And one of them got canter backwards. How many canter backwards horses are you seeing? Not many. There's only one I've seen. One, that's it, right? 
Um, and uh, I've seen it on videos, but I've never seen it in the real, again and again and again, right, right here at World of Christian Games. Um, and, uh, uh, and they had their head legs forward. Well, they did better Piaf and Pashas than we saw at the FEI last night, or the, night, the other night. <laughs> um, well, they did, as simple as that. So the dressage people, they say, got to be shoulder hip heel. Well, no, it doesn't, right? And you're teaching beginners, get a little protection, get a little bit like an eventer. Not a vendor in the world, do you ever hear a jumper? I've never heard a jumping coach say, get your leg back. They never come out of their mouth. It will never will. But by gosh, I've heard them say, steer us towards the fence, feet towards the fence, push your heel down, push your toe forward, toe in front of the knee. Is your toe visible? Don't you jump that fence until that toe is in front of your knee. Can you see your calf? I've heard people say, the front of the calf, can you look down and see the front of your leg? That's how far forward they want that leg. Because they want to forward a bit, Plus, they know you're going to stuff it up, so I want another inch of protection. Insurance. I remember um, years ago, one of our gold medalists, Matt Ryan, used to call it his seat belts. That's what kept him on. Uh, he won Atlanta Olympics, so, or won, the, won, won the, one of the team medals at Atlanta Olympics, so it must be pretty good. Seat belts, that so keep you on. Should the leg be so far forward that I do want, for one reason or another, to get the rider more elegant for a show class? I stand them up. I do not bring their leg back. I'd stand them up and let Mother Nature take care of itself. I was saying that to Larry the other day. Um, to get, I don't, I don't bring their legs back, especially a copper. A copper wants to stick their leg out there, to leave them there. At least they're the ones that don't, that, that should stay on. Now they might have other other problems with their body that's, that they keep falling off. That could be right too. Uh, but and I tell you what. If you're out there for 14 hours on your police horse, let me know how you sit, because sit however you can. <laughs> whatever you got left, whatever ankles and knees that you got left to stay on, because I tell you, over half an hour of my ankles are killing me. Um, how they do it, I don't know. They're just amazing people. But to stretch your leg out, oh, what great relief when your ankles and knees are hurting. That's all you've got left. Um, plus, shoulder hip heel never occurs in canter. It cannot, it must not, it's forbidden. Inside leg on the girth, outside leg behind tells the horse to go right. Inside leg on the girth, outside leg behind tells the horse to go left. It's forbidden. A shoulder hip heel never occurs on a circle. Inside leg on the girth, outside leg behind. Shoulder hip heel never occurs on a corner. Six metres prior to the corner, the inside leg goes forward, Maintains forward all the way around the corner because it's a half a circle. Makes sense. Shoulder in's a circle, so where would the inside leg be? On the girth. Half pass is a circle, so where would be the inside leg be? So you don't even need to know what these movements are to know where your inside leg should be. Pity you weren't at the FEI the other night. A pirouette, little baby circle. Where would the inside leg be? On the girth. Inside leg on the girth, outside leg, who cares what the outside leg does? Nine times out of ten, it's busy doing stuff anyway. <laughs> inside leg, I can only think of one thing at a time, right? The other thing is this. If I'm going to fall anywhere, I'm not going to fall that way. I will not fall down that hole. Because if I'm coming around that corner and I fall, to, if I'm going to the right and I fall at two o'clock, I'm in front of that horse's inside hind foot and I ain't going that way. I might get pinged over the fence and land on the concrete first before I would go that way because that way is death, right? I, to me, I'm like, not happening, right? And that's the first thing I think is get that heel down, get that foot forward. We're not going that way, falling down that hole. Either literally falling and getting injured or just falling on the forehand and falling in. Well, I ain't going that way. I'll go anyway, but that way. Right, so the inside leg on the girth, very, very big deal. Look how beautiful the bay leg is. The inside leg's on the girth. Good on her. Now, it doesn't have to be kicking on the girth and doing anything. You can just hang there. If it's a power equestrian, it's not going to be doing anything. Right? The inside leg's always on the girth for the corners. So does that answer the question about shoulder, hip, heel? Right? Okay, if you want in a show class and shoulder hip heel in the middle of the halt or something, I don't know, good for you. But I won't ride like that. 
and I sure as heck won't teach like that. I want to teach so that my riders stay on and are venting over jumps down hill, flat out, police officers being pulled to, to the ground by some idiot drunkard at a football match, um, and, uh, or, or worse, offenders. Um, and, well, they're pretty much offenders too. Um, and, uh, and, and vultures, you know. Vulture gets their leg back. They can't pull somebody on. Vulture gets their leg back. They can't hold somebody up. A little bit of protection. Never hurt anybody. A little bit of insurance. Right? I like to, I like you to make it to the end.